uh, this meeting is the last thing. Got it. Okay. Do you guys do you guys see the my lovely photo? Perfect. I love good. I love those birch trees. That's beautiful. Uh, good morning, County of Stetler. Welcome to our second to last talking with trees with Toso. Uh, as always, my good friend Toso is here with us. Good morning, Toso. Good morning, Quinton and the folks in the county of Stetler. Today we're talking about pruning. Um, there is way more involved with pruning than we can cover in an hour, but we'll do our best. Uh, and I've got some special tidbits I'm going to throw in from time to time. Because it's one of our last... Uh, segments on our 10 piece webinar and we are um, doing a shelter belt program again this will be starting up in December we'll be taking orders through until March uh, with tree delivery in that first week of May so hopefully you've been following along through all these segments um, by all means go back on our website and check them out if you happen to see the promo code in today's event, you will get a 15% discount on your trees. So watch for it, listen for it, and write it down. With that, okay. Toso, take it away. Can I apply for that promo code? <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Quinton. Uh, I really enjoy those uh, Tuesday sessions with uh, with you, Quinton, and the and the uh, county of Stetler. I folks, uh, I hope folks in County Slater is gonna come and, and look at that. Um, I usually uh, I prefer to have a tree proning uh, face to face with people. Nothing replaces that, and people can learn a lot when I when I can show them in in, in real life how to prune the trees and where to look. I will try to this presentation cover some of the basics of the pruning, what you have to pay attention, and uh, hopefully that will. This is a first step for you. Um, to learn about pruning and, and, and why do you need to prune, uh, prune the trees in the first place in that sense. Um, I hope, I just hope that one day we will be able to have a face-to-face -face field day uh, and to show to people how to do the proper pruning and tree planting and many other things that we can do uh, uh, on, the, on the site and, and, and the hands-on. So, uh, as usual, you probably know already enough about my tree, um, about my business, and it's uh, we've been now a second year almost. Uh, and I always said trees are our passion. I love the trees. <clears throat> I've been doing this for almost 27 years, and we offer services to the range of the businesses, and uh, and uh, uh, each of them are different and unique in many ways. Um, as I said, our service from the only on the tree side is uh, foreign uh, is the arborist service, urban town and tree services, which is usually mostly dealing with uh, inventory developing by uh, forest management plan bylaws and policy regulations. We also have experience with the natural forest and agroforestry services. So um, I still learn every day after even 27 years work in this, in this area. Okay, so as always start with the key messages. Um, you have to be familiar with this phrase, duty of care, and you must be really aware as a landowner and having the trees on your property. Uh, and I'm gonna to explain to what that means. Uh, first thing you have to keep in mind, most trees do not require any pruning whatsoever. Uh, you have to have a reason to prune the trees. If you don't have a reason to prune the trees, leave them alone. Tree will, trees will do the very well without pruning because again, pruning is always give the stress to the tree. Uh, in other hand, it does help when it's needed, but generally speaking, it's always a uh, stressful time for treatment to be pruned. Safety is a must, are a must precautions, and uh, there is lots of uh, lots of crazy videos out there that have seen what people do when they prune the trees. I want to really give you a grim reminder for all of us out there that in North America, every second day professional arborists die. It's a horrible, horrible. Those are people are spending their lifetime as, as pruning the trees and they still, uh, still die because pruning the trees and dealing the trees is a deadly business. And, uh, and sadly, sadly, lots of my colleagues die every second day in North America, which is around 200 arborists a year died. 
uh, that is higher than the people who are cutting the trees in British Columbia, big forest, you know, 120 foot Douglas fir. Um, arborist is way more dangerous profession than any other profession. So sometimes, again, that's why some of the arborists, when they charge you, uh, that's a part of it. What people do and removing the trees is really tough, tough, hard work. Uh, I'm going to tell you how to perform the proper pruning. It's called three-way pruning. Uh, and it's easy. Once you learn that, you can stay for the rest of your life how to do the proper, uh, proper pruning. Remember the 3D, that disease is damaged. Uh, you can prune those three any time. Uh, and that's the thing that you, you have to, again, you're going to explain to you what it means. Uh, when people ask, when can I prune? I said, you can prune any time. But there's a few exceptions. And I'm going to mention some of the exceptions. Uh, one of the exceptions is, again, dead and disease or damage. You can prune any time. You, you have to know what, what you're doing it. But those are, uh, those are some of them we call 3D and when to prune the trees, as I said, it's any time. Hire ISA certified arborist. Be extremely aware with the people who said, oh, I know how to cut the trees. I know how to take the trees down. I know how to prune the trees. I always said, be very, very careful about the people where I call them with the pickup truck and chainsaw. And, and they said, oh, I've been doing this for a long time. Always ask. Always ask for the WCB and the insurance. If people don't have a WCB insurance, stay away from them. If something goes wrong, you are going to be liable. So, again, hiring the professional certified arborist will cover yourself, and, and those people should be able to do the uh, good job. Um, pruning the fruit trees requires extra knowledge and skills. I personally consider it as an art. You, uh, I grew up in the orchards. Um, it was a 70 years old orchard and my grandpa and dad taught me how to do the uh, pruning and, and learn about uh, from apples to cherries to walnuts to on and on. Each of them have a unique requirements. And the whole purpose of that pruning the fruit uh, is to uh, either two, two things, either create, uh, uh, increase the production of the, of the fruit or increase the production of the flower for the beauty. Uh, if you ever happen that you have a tree that goes there, hazards, either again in your municipal land or RVs or campgrounds or parks or, or your personal at your home that you see the tree that is leaning and can go in your, in your, uh, on your house or, or the people property, um, hire independent qualified arborists. Uh, myself, I don't do the tree more, but I do the track. I do the tree risk assessment. Uh, and I always said sometimes what, People, some of the arborists do, they, they will say, oh, I will do the uh, hazard assessment, but in the same time, I'm going to remove your tree. S separate those two. Do the one arborist with, uh, uh, <laughs> with, uh, 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 with a qualified assessment, and then you can do the tree removal. Oh, that's a lovely promo code. Okay. Uh, tools. People ask me, what tools, what do I buy? Doesn't matter what you buy. Keep them sharp and clean. That's the old things what you need from tools. Pruning is lots of hard work, but it's lots of fun. Uh, I have uh, so many clients when I taught them how to prune, and they said to me, Tosha, this is a mental break for me. I enjoy it. I'm holding out. I take my time. I have uh, my good friend who never ever, who was a landscaper and making the millions and never ever pruned before the trees. I spend the time and show him. And this spring, he said to me, Tosha, I enjoyed for three weeks, two weeks, slowly doing the pruning the shrubs and cleaning up and pruning the trees. And I will tell you, folks, he did an outstanding job. He said, you're a good, good teacher. And educate, learn a lot about, lots about pruning. You have a lots of information. And I hope that this webinar is going to help you out, guys, um, how to do the proper pruning. Now, something called duty of care. It is you as a landowner responsible uh, that you, if you have a trees on your property uh, and you are an owner of the trees, that you perform the duty of care. It's a low duty of care. Uh, it's basically what I said, you take a reasonable care to avoid the acts or omission which uh, he or she could reasonably foresee may results on harm and injury. When you as a landowner, a tree owner, uh, fail to exercise uh, responsibility, the results be uh, a claim for negligence. Sadly, in the last probably five, six years, I've seen more and more people are suing uh, because of the negligence when it comes to the trees. People do all kinds of things. 
people go to the some other else property and cut the trees and and again that's of course it's it's not it's trespassing and all kind of problems but if you have a trees that they are uh, that could be fail on on the your property or somebody else's property or harm injure somebody and you have not performed duty of care which means have you done the risk assessment have you done proper pruning have you take care of all of the precautions reasonable care uh, to avoid the uh, negligence and that uh, the first thing that judge is asked have you performed that or not if you haven't you they will they will charge you for negligence so keep that in mind and again it, that tree fell on your property or or somebody else insurance company will cover that uh but they will they will uh, be caused to that or for the negligence yeah, if something goes wrong now safety it doesn't matter how small tree or shrub you 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 do the any pruning. Um, have a safety gloves, please. Good gloves, um, clothes. I I Google is one of the. I, even myself, I do little pruning of the apples and roses and cherries and other. And uh, it's a little branch, little trees, and and I always wear uh, safety goggles. It's so quickly they go in your eye and 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 your head. That those are little twigs and branches. Uh, and really can can damage your damage your eyes and in your face. Uh, of course, if you use the chainsaw or anything like that, you have to have a safety helmets and gloves and clothes and everything else. The second thing, if you have a tree under the power line, do not touch it. Simple as that. Don't play with that. Uh, uh, and if you uh, have a tree that is creating the power line and, and damages. Call the certified arborist or call the utility company. They will send somebody who do this. If you, during the storm, during the summer storm or winter storm, when you have a tree failing on, 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 the, on the power lines and power lines are down, do not, do not, must not come even close to those trees. Don't to try to touch them. Don't try to clean them because the uh, electricity can be there and, and can truly go through the tree and electrify you. So do not, do not come anywhere close to the power lines. The same thing with the tree planting. If you uh, if you want to plant the trees, call uh, three uh, one call to make sure that there is no power lines or gas lines in underground. If you have a, no experience to prune, especially bigger trees, don't do it. Don't try to learn on the big trees. Um, a ladder, don't use them. I personally, I'm 52 years of age, and I don't use any ladder. If I cannot reach with my power pole. I call arborists and say, hey, let somebody else do the work. I'm not going to do that. So um, so don't use a ladder because they're slippery. You can go lots of things can go wrong and you can hurt yourself. Weather. Uh, if you go through now, which I don't recommend, uh, it's cold and slippery and freezing and, uh, and uh, you can slip and it really hurt yourself. Uh, that same thing applies for the winter time when you have a snow or anything like that. If you have to remove the, some of the some of the branches and trees in the summertime, if you are hot day, you can very quickly dehydrate and, and by doing the pruning pruning work. Uh, make sure you're physically fit. It's that I said to the people when you start pruning, don't try to do everything at once. Take a one day at a time or a couple of hours a day and do the pruning. And again, as I mentioned, a friend of mine who was a landscaper, and I told him, do not try to do it once, everything. Just take a couple of hours and do this section of the shrubs or trees and then go next day, next section. And, and, and that's that's the way you're going to learn, but you're also not going to physically exhaust yourself. Trees with diseases, flaws, holes, weak, uh, those are with the fork. And you can see, you know, how the, the, the fork and the trees, again, are more hazardous. So be careful with that. Lots of people don't see the fungi on the bottom of the trees when they try to fail it uh, and you try to do the proper cut whole tree breaks or whole tree crumble just crumble and and we call them a widow makers um if you have a trees with lots of dead branches or something like that uh those are dead branches like a projectile um again we call them uh, uh widow makers so make sure that you know if you don't know what you're doing don't don't touch it it's pretty pretty deadly business to be honest and if you hire somebody as i said you must ask for insurance in wcp if they don't have it don't hire them Simple as that. There is no negotiation there. Now, reason for the pruning. There's a basically three reasons. Safety. 
Number one, if it's tree, pose the hazard to your home, to people, to properties, to power lines, to anything. Okay, well, then you have to do that because of the safety reasons. If the trees are, are, are infested by certain insects or certain diseases, or weather related, you know, like a drought or, 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 or heavy snow that break the branches, okay, you have to do that, uh, do, do the tree pruning. Uh, if you have an orchard and uh, you have a tree that you want know, to produce the apples and cherries and you know fruit, okay, that there is you purposely pruning the trees for the production purposes. <clears throat> Last but not least is aesthetics. I strongly discourage that. Now, if you have a lot of dead branches, remove the remove the dead branches, tree is gonna look look better. But if you try to make all kind of shapes and you know, what we call topiary, don't do that. It's very, very hard trees. And I'm going to a little bit explain to that. Last, again, not least, is the fire hazard. Um, again, next Monday, we're going to talk about fire and uh, potential hazards. And you have to be conscious about that, that many times in your shelter belts or your home, when you have a lots of small dead uh, twigs and branches, it can go into the fire and create more, more problem to you with the fire. So you have to have a reason. If none of that, this is a reason to you, don't touch your trees. Let the tree grow. Uh, Mother Nature designed the tree the way it's supposed to be. Again, reason, you, know, you can see it from left, it's safety. This is a monster um, uh, below that is all over with huge branches, hugely leaning, going potential in the sewage. And uh, it's really, it's a beautiful tree, but creates lots of headaches. And from safety to the uh, operation, you know, to the sewage and and the roots and all kinds of things, it's just too much. And again, but there is a reason to prune the tree. Uh, on the second one, it was in Red Deer, it was a big storm and uh, lots of trees fall down and leaning and the people are using the trails. Um, you have to look and do the risk, uh, tree risk hazard assessment and, uh, and make sure that, uh, that, that those the trees are, are safe and that people can use it. Uh, on, on they protect the infrastructure. Lots of times you go to the malls and the streets and, and all, all, all around and you see the tree growing in, or the signs are within the trees and people prune the trees and butcher most of the time, unfortunately. Health, you know, on the left, you have a disease. It's called Cytospora canker. Uh, on, on this bottom, you have uh, uh, oyster shell scales with the shrub. Talking after the shrubs, you have to do prune them and cut them to the ground and let the new growth without, without this uh, insect. Uh, fruit and flower production, you, you can do that. And lastly, aesthetics. Again, I people like it. I cannot say don't do it, but generally speaking, it's very harsh for the tree in the trees. And again, tree like this, in, if you don't do this, can live, let's say 60, 70 years. If you do this, it's gonna live 30, 40 years. And again, that's the choice that people make. Now, what is not pruning? And sadly, all of those examples I used to see on this photo is around my neighborhood. Okay. It's absolutely nothing to do with the pruning. I, I tried to figure out what's the purpose of the, my neighbor cutting everything and, and creating the just like a totem pole. And I said, why, why would you do that? Interestingly enough, this tree shoots new branches and, and every three years he comes and hire a local guy and local guy cut all of the branches. I leave this. And I said, what's the point? Why, why would you do that? <laughs> Maybe if you do the carving or anything like that, I can, I, I can understand, but nothing that. Look at this. It's total butchering and topping. Leaving those two branches is going to break off in some aspect. Again, this is a topping uh, that has a nothing to do with this. Uh, this is also, um, again, my neighbor, he just shave it, just cut it every second or third year. Uh, he does that. So there's, this is not the pruning. This is uh, called butchering and nothing else but butchering. Uh, as a result of that, you have a gazillion of so small little, uh, we call water sprouts. Remember the tree that I showed you previously here? This one. And uh, you can see the, how this tree looks like in, in, the, in the springtime and the summertime. Yeah? And the only reason why is that because this tree has a very healthy roots. Very healthy roots. But after probably 10 years, eventually this tree is going to be dead. Same thing here. Look at those water sprouts from the previous photos. And this, again, all of the water sprouts and they come and, you know, and hire a local arborist. And they are local, not an action team, local arborist. I wish they hire arborists. Arborists should not, should not ever do something, job like this. Not any 
decent and certified arborists should be able to agree to do the work like this, period. Uh, most of the people who are called a tree, tree guy who did all kind of work but uh, knows um, nothing about trees, but they have a chainsaw and, and, uh, or the pruners and they come and do this. Again, professional arborists should not do that. But again, this is a result. And uh, some people do that. And every two years, they come and take it out and, and prune them again and basically just milking the, milking the way from the landowners. Uh, the other thing that is very common is the under the power line, uh, lots of people planted the trees uh, under the power line, never looked at over there, and they had all kinds of problems. Or sometimes power lines came later after the tree was planted and they come and cut the toppings and, and again, reducing the lifespan of the other trees by probably 50%. This sad part of this one, they planted newly like a $250 trees when they were planted like a four years ago and the trees already going to the power lines. And so what they're gonna do, they're gonna cut and do something like this. It's absolutely avoidable. You don't need that. People, you know, every time when you plant the trees, and I hope in my sessions, when you plant the tree, look above, look above, look away those are power lines, that you don't need to do this. And now many of the uh, uh, utility companies actually is going to charge you, and they should. If you planted the trees under the power line that you're already existing, probably they should. Uh, and uh, many of them are still doing this for free, but it's really costly business. There's so many of the trees that shouldn't be. And again, the best way to avoid to plant a small tree Plant a lilac, plant an apple, plant a tree that will never reach the power line. And you're going to still have a privacy. There's a small, small conifer that you can plant. And I mentioned in the, in the last session that there's so many choices you can plant. But generally speaking, this is avoidable. The other thing is avoidable. People do this pruning. What they do, they prune everything inside and like in this one and leave this like we call lion tails. This is so easy to break off in the wind. It just break off. You have to have a inside of the inside of the tree all of those are small branches and twigs and and that is like a full tree that is like what you see above not what you see below uh this was in my old folks uh, in my in the in the place that i used to work and the arborists came and they created lion tail i gave the hard time to them i said you can't do that this is this is not proper pruning but lots of people unfortunately unfortunately do that um Choking of the trees, again, this is much more results not of the pruning that people forget about guy, guy wire. Uh, guy wire. Um, they forgot uh, all kinds of trees, uh, uh, things in the trees and trees break down. And again, totally avoidable, totally avoidable. That's basically kill the tree. This one is a sad part, actually. This one is in front of the Walmart uh, in Edmonton. And uh, landscaper charged them arm and a leg and they put this forget about this and tree, these trees was killed and break off and they actually not one but it was probably 30 of them but again company said okay Walmart said no way we're gonna just gonna replace and get a better, <laughs> better landscaper uh root damages is also part of lots of people do the damages again you create uh, nothing but the problem and the easiest way to either uh, put a guard around the trees or put a wood mulch uh, wood chips around and you're never going to come with a lawnmower or weed walker around this tree. Uh, raise the uh, uh, cutting uh, for the cutting grass, raise the, raise the bar and or put the cover with the, with the mulch uh, to avoid this. Because when you cut like something like this, you, you uh, fungus come in the roots and, and once the fungus come in the roots, root, root, uh, tree nothing in head but the problems. Um, this was uh, actually a good example when the, somebody did a pruning and broke off the when one cut broke off the branch and look at this ability of the tree this is the new growth and this is like when we cut ourselves and you have a scalp and that special tissue close close that cut and that's what tree does it's closed this doesn't let the fungi go inside and this tree is actually pretty healthy i walk every day uh, uh but again it was a, a improper pruning that broke off the half of the tree uh, but again, tree has ability to heal, and that's that's my message. Guys, don't forget the promo code. Quinton is giving that. Um, myth about pruning. Uh, myths about pruning. Uh, pruning is difficult. It's very hard work. It's a very very physical hard work. Very rewarding, but very hard. Um, removing the pruning tree is a crime against nature. It's not. It definitely can help the trees and, and really uh, uh, saving the trees. 
most trees need the pruning. No, they don't. As I said in the beginning, you don't need to prune it. You don't need to prune the trees unless you have a reason for it. And anybody with a pickup truck chainsaw and a pruner is an expert. Be extremely aware of that. I've been doing this for a while and I'm learning every day. And, uh, and uh, uh, I still learn every day. I said, oh, I never thought about that. I never seen this before or, or uh, what other people done. And, and, and science is improving and, and new things are coming up on the, on, online, or on, on board. And there's a hope. What was used to be in the past it's not any more relevant what is today. And good one, one is the, uh, the cut must be treated with paint. No, do not paint your, your pruning cuts at all. Don't even try to do that. And I'm going to explain to you. So there is lots of myths about uh, tree pruning. And I'm going to try to debunk it as much as I can. Uh, basic things before you have a reason to prune, go around the tree. That's the first thing. Each of the trees is unique. Each of the trees has a different shape size form leaning uh, some of the bigger branches smaller branches all kind of uh, all kind of things that you you have to look in the trees and then i said okay what do i want from him and why do i need to prune trees and again those are some of the basic principles as i said, visualize remove the 3d remove the weak crotches uh cut back branches the collar if it's leave it don't leave the stubs um, remember, don't try to do a lot. Lots of people try to do, uh, you know, they neglect the trees for 30 years and now they said, okay, in, in one spring, I want to prune everything and get done for next 30. No, that doesn't work. And don't try to do that. Again, here is the one thing that you have to look and visualize and, and pay attention. So again, if you have a dead branch, okay, you can remove that anytime. If you have a decay, okay, watch out for that. Is it new? Is it new growth? It try to close the decay or not, or it, or, or the or the hole is getting bigger. Uh, included bark in this in this way. I'm going to explain to you. Codominant stems, uh, broken branches, suckers. So those are things that you can look around and say, what do I have? I have a tree like this. I want to get the tree to this. And that's, that's the whole goal of the pruning. You have to lo look for the scaffolding. You have to look for the, for the uh, is it safe or not? You have to look at the joints of the branches. So it's just a little bit of observation uh, going around before you do anything uh, and tie that to the reason. Why do you want to prune the tree uh, in the first place? Uh, when you buy the young trees, lots of people make that mistake. Uh, you know, they buy from the stores, and most of this should have been properly pruned before we get the stores, or when you have a tree nursery, I know they are pruned properly. But again, if you ever buy the trees that you have a three or four leaders, if you don't do then nothing, you end up like this. You have a three or four leaders, you're gonna have weak crotches, you're gonna have a kind of mess. What you try to do is always have a one leader that goes all the way along the trunk, all the way to the ground, and try as much as possible to have a scaffolding. And this tree is way more stronger, way more healthier, and way more uh, long living than this one. If you have a something like this, some of the some of the branches are going to break off and, and create your wounds and, and trouble. And again, here is a good example of the, of the trees. If, you know, unfortunately, you, there is lots of leaves, but you can see the where is the, where is the trunk and and goes all the way to main stem and go all the way to main leader. And there is a proper scaffolding. There is a proper everything there. So again, that's what you want if you have a young tree. Train the young tree. Same as a kids. If you train them and, and you know give them proper way, they will they will get into the great people uh, down the road. So uh, that same thing apply with the trees. Uh, understanding that what you're cutting. Okay, this is a basic thing. If you we call the bark ridge. So this is a basic bark ridge. When the two branches join and they push, you know again that's the ridge. And if you hope, if you don't have that bark ridge or lack of the bark ridge, you call, we call it inclusion. The two branches grow one into another, another one. The other thing, the most important thing is something we call branch collar. It's like a, this swelling. Do not ever damage this swelling. That's the swelling that closed the wound. That's the swelling that I said, you know, like when we have a scab and cut ourselves, that's the swelling that closed the wound and doesn't get the fungi into it. Again, Mother Nature find a way how to protect themselves, okay? And that's the one that she, I always said, do not damage this. And I'm going to show you uh, in a few more slides how it look like in real life. Um, also, the branch union, the more, this is a ridge. You can see this ridge, how it goes up. And this is inclusion, where the one branch and growing another. When you have a stump like this, it's much easier for this branch to break off. 
this one is more stable and it's not going to break off easy. Uh, the more U shape you have, the better it is. The more V shape, the weaker union is. And a is a good example again, the same tree with like almost U shape. And even though it's a massive elm tree and big branches, this those are two branches not gonna easy break off because they have a strong joints. This is what they have versus this one. If this you can see this line where they're gonna break off. And that's where usually after the wind or heavy snow, this is where they break off. And this is how it looks like when the two branches are joined, growing inside each other, they create this crack or over there, and eventually they break off. And uh, and again, and, and that's where the, that's weak union, because you can see this V over there is also was very V, so it's not U. So the more you have, the better it is. Again, this is where the one branch grow into another, and uh, in the windstorm break off, and and basically this tree most likely it's not anymore suitable to keeping because if there's a, so much damage on the bark and so much damage on the structure of the tree same thing here when the two branches grow into the v they in the strong wind they break off and and uh, and fall fall down now three way cut this is the simplest way and the only way that you're going to prune the trees doesn't matter anything bigger than two inch you have to use a three way cut remember folks what i told you a uh, branch color okay uh, no, understanding that branch color is the, probably the most important thing that you guys have to look at. Uh, this is the, the swelling. You can see this swelling, and this is where the branch grow. You can see this swelling. This is where the branch start growing. So instead of what lots of people do, they come with the chainsaw and right away try to cut this. And they rip off half of the tree, half of the trunk, and very, uh, very deadly. Uh, lots of people, don't. they don't really... Even look the above, they go almost under the branch and try to cut the branch. So the, this is the simplest way and only way to prune the heavy branch, anything more than two inch. You take a one undercut, okay? And then come closer and take this weight because it is a heavy weight branch and, and it's going to just like a drop, okay? And then you have a, like a, this little stub between uh, branch collar and this where you made the first undercut. That's the cold stub. And you look at where is this swelling and you make a final cut. And it's look at how short. So this one is not going to uh, uh, rip off half of your branch or half of the half of the trunk or anything like that. And it's pretty small. Same thing, this is on the pine. Again, you can see this swelling. Okay. You do the under, uh, undercut first. You do the second cut. You take the weight off. And then you have this little stub. And then you look at where is the swelling and you make a final cut. Or any tree doesn't matter what size and, and shape and species this is the way you go and try to remember it do the three-way cut take the weight off over there of the heavy branch and don't leave the stubs and the third the most important do not damage that branch color that's the special tissue that is going to close the wound same thing here three-way cut just more visual on the smaller branches again do not damage look at where this guy is cutting this little stub and you can see that he's going to cut here and properly cut and and try to uh, close the wounds and again here is what if people do just make that what we call flash cuts and you're going to make a flash cut together where where is the trunk is and the fungi is going to come here because there is no root uh, branch collar to close this wound and that's what you don't want to avoid do not do the flash cuts now, when you do the pruning on the, of, the, of the small twigs and branches, it's basically show the direction. So you have a tree or shrub that you have a branches going into your sidewalk or going to your window or going to whatever, something that is bothering you. First thing you have to understand, there is a, when you look at the twigs or branch, either they have a opposite side buds or opposite side branches or alternate zigzagging. Look at this one here, one here, one is zigzag. Okay. So each of them requires a little bit to pay attention. If you have a, this one, you're going to perform the pruning or is a proper cut, just a little bit above, under the little bit slope, because why we make a little bit slope? We don't want to, when it's raining, when the droplets of water get on that cut, we want them to slide down and go, go away. We don't want to have a flat cut here because the water stay and they try to rot here, okay? Uh, on the on the on the uh, alternate uh, buds, 
you if you cut too high again you're going to have lots of small little small little sprouts and this is the proper way with with the branch pruning if i uh, i'm going to go back so i want to let's say this little branch is creating me a lots of headache okay and hitting my window or hitting the where i walk uh, scratching my car or whatever you have and you want to remove it so what you do you cut here and the new branch is going to go this direction so with this branch and twigs you can really put the direction where the new branch is going to go and that's the beauty of the pruning i said you know what i can i i want a new branch go this direction and just get the more sunlight or avoid the scratching my car okay i can cut here and new branch is going to go this direction or i want to go the opposite i can cut here and the new branch is going to go that direction so that's the one again dealing with the small twigs and branches you literally prune where the where the where the joints are of those twigs and branches and you also creating the different direction to the uh, to your to the branch where you want to go no need to paint or wound dressing here is a that again big tree and this is where they're closing up this is where they close this is where our uh, i call the scar but we have in our skin this is where they close and and you don't need to do any pruning again this is where they close and i said no and no fungi no anything is going to go inside it's a just mother nature way of the of the healing itself again stubs do not leave the stubs do not leave this that uh that branches especially if you have a young kids and they're low uh, low that bran low that branches on the spruce and kids cannot see that and they can go into their head same thing with this one or this one if you leave like this the rot is going to come through and they are going to go inside of this instead of just make a final cut here where there's this spelling and the, uh, the, the spruce tree is going to close what it's closed here or close here and a you know, rot is not going to come inside of the inside of the trunk um for the hedges the biggest thing with hedges doesn't matter which one you have cotton aster or 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 or, or subalpine um uh was the name now my favorite. uh whatever head you have always try to keep the bottom wide and top narrow lots of people made that mistake on the early stages they keep the top wide and then what you have if you keep the top wide sun simply cannot come into the lower branches and cannot photosynthesize and that's why you have a leaves on the bottom are are dropped and you don't have a leaves at all in that sense if you have a like this the sunlight can literally hit every single small leaves and they will photosynthesize and they will they will be alive and you're not going to have a holes in the hedge in that sense so always again try to make a uh, top narrow and bottom wide top area of shearing uh as i mentioned before people do that people like it people like all kind of shape size and form um generally speaking this is not proper way of pruning uh you reduce over the whole health of the trees but people like it and if you like it you have to know what you're doing many times again they prune so much and they're creating the holes in the tree like this because they get to the point that's no no prune, no and no green leaves are left uh to prune i uh, went to prune conifers you can prune any time uh, the best time to prune is from march to mid may that's the best time. This time of year, I do not suggest anybody. I got a lady asking, "Can you prune my apple now?" I said, "No. It's no point to prune the, your any fruit tree now whatsoever. Trees are shutting down and try to get all the possible sugar in the roots. And sometimes we have a warm uh, fall. What we have this, and if you prune them now, uh, it's create a stress to the tree. And tree, tree, I need to grow. I need to grow. And then the cold winter comes and kill kill the branch. So don't prune now." um march to mid may you can do that you can prune any 3d any time uh there is exceptions uh regulatory exception ex uh, exemptions is the elm tree do not prune from april 1st to october 1st so now you can do the pruning of elm tree if it needed um and uh, and again th that is that's the law uh birch and maple usually i recommend to prune uh early in the spring or when they already start leafing out um the problem why you I ask people not to prune during the summer or when the leaves are, you simply don't see where those branches are. You simply don't see the structure of the trees when you have a leaves. 
And that's why you prune them in March or April when you don't have a leaf. You see that crossing, you see the broken branch, you see the different angles, you, you, you can see the structure and you know where you're pruning. Once they leave out, it's much harder to see that. And that's why we prefer to prune from April to, uh, from March to, to uh, mid-May. How much prune? I always said, don't try to do everything. Even 25% of live branches is too much. Take the time, you know, because if you neglect the tree for many, many, many years, you try to fix it once, it doesn't work. Don't try to take more than 25% of the live tissue. You can take a lot of that one, okay, that, that's fine. But uh, the, the, the live one, it's always, when you prune live one, it's always stressed to the tree, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, importance of the pruning when they're young. You prune them when they're young. You can see this in this, uh, this is an elm tree. You can see this line of the leader and one, uh, one line from the bottom to the top. That's what you want. You have a scaffolding, you have a nice side branches, uh, you have a leader. Same thing with this linden tree. You have a, that leader, you can see from the top all the way to down. You have a different, uh, different scaffolding and everything, a perfect tree. And this tree will last a long time because it's healthy structure and can handle lots of, lots of uh, stress from the wind and, and storms. So you always have create, try to create that balance. When tree only get 20 years away, it's already shaped. It's like a, you know, same as a teenager or people in the early 20s or, or, or late 20s. It's much more difficult uh, to, uh, to shape. Um, balance is needed. Reduction, you might do that. Uh, you might clean the, some of the dead wood, but again, it's much more harder to uh, create a, a structural sounding tree than when it's young. With the conifers, he's lots of people made mistake. When you take a branch of, of cedar, of spruce, or a pine, and you're gonna see the branch, and inside of that branch, you're gonna see this green little little uh, branch, or 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 in this case here again, you can see the where it, where it's green. And after that, you see no any more green, no green here. If you cut this branch here and you take the green stuff off you're gonna end up with a dead stick. If you cut this branch here, and again, you're gonna end up with that stick. If you cut this branch here, where this little green uh, twig is, you're gonna have a new twig going, going in that direction. And again, if you if you look lots of in the coniferous, um, and you see the tree that lots of people cut those live thing, and they left the dead one. What's the point to keeping the dead branches? Number one, if you wanna prune, prune properly. Number two, if you just take the green stuff, leave the dead stick, it's just danger, and for especially with the spruce, with lots of branches, with lots of dead sticks, and kids are playing around, or you are in, uh, you are going around. It's going to be a huge amount of scratches if you have along the uh, driveways, on and on. If you want to remove this branch, go all the way to the trunk and do the proper pruning. If you want to keep this branch alive, do not cross this line. Once you cross this line, where it's no no any more green stuff in the coniferous, no new green stuff is going to grow. You're going to put that, that, uh, that sticks. Um, you can do the uh, spruce in fur again year round pretty much. What you have to pay attention is this. With the pine, you have this we call candles. If you want to get your pine, get more bushier and more, more closure, more, let's say for the privacy, what you do, you pinch those candles and the two or three new branches are going to come pop up eventually whole Whole, or whole tree or shrub is going to be full of little branches and you're going to create the privacy. Same thing with a good friend of mine, Peter, showing the pine. Uh, and this is a one-year growth. Between this branch and this branch is one year. Between this branch and, and, and this branch is one year. Between this branch and that, the leader is one year. So many times when, we, when we look, I look at trees, I can find out the age of the trees or the coniferous by looking where we call whorls. Um, and again, do not cut pine between those two. You end up with a dead stick. If you want to reduce this height, cut here. Do not cut here. If you want to reduce the, the this height between those two, cut here. Don't cut between. And that's the thing. Lots of people made a mistake, and again, you end up with dead twigs or that 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 branches. With the spruce, look at the spruce. Spruce has a way more little buds. And you can still look where they are. You can cut here. New buddies here. New buddies here. New buddies here. All over. Uh, and again, the spruce is more forgiving than, let's say, pine. 
Uh, so you still have to look where, where you're going to cut. You can cut any time in the year. But again, you, spruce has a way more small little buds than, than pine. And with the pine, you always look for the candle. And don't cut between the two whorls in, in, in the tree. Uh, pruning on the infested trees, um, oyster shell scales, fire blight. Uh, it's very common. Uh, and it happened in the summertime, and literally, like somebody take a tiger torch and and, and uh, go after your after your trees. If you have a fire blight and then find a fire blight, you have to use the sterilize your tools, go cut right away, and put in the uh, plastic bag and try to dispose as much as soon as you can. Uh, it's a bacteria, and it's spread through the wind and 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 the particles of water. Uh, it's deadly. I've seen lots of trees in completely dead by this one. If you have a few branches like here, you can come and do the proper pruning. You have to sterilize your tool after every cut. Um, if you have a black knot, uh, again, the best time to prune is uh, January, February, March, uh, because this little little uh, uh, fungi can have uh, like a 3 million spores. Never ever prune, prune black knot when it's growing over the growing season. It's leaves it out. You're going to spread them like crazy. If you have only one, hold that one and then remove that one. But if you have too many of them, you're going to, if you, lots of people made a mistake, prune them in May, June, July or so, and then they get way more black knot than ever before. Um, again, this is uh, for the black knot in the Pinchery, Chokchery, Mayday, Schubert. Um, they are notorious for the black knot. Uh, here's a more list of the black knot. Again, you can see oh, this is my again neighboring tree full of this. And uh, if you want to reduce and cut one of the branch, cut at least the 12 inches. At least. I would prefer the two feet uh, because it's a fungi and it can go spread uh, going down the down the uh, stem and can and can spread more. So overall with the black knot, uh, this tree that I'm showing here, it's been since 2001 that I know of. Full of black knot, still green, still alive. It spread all of the neighborhood and spreading the black knot and killing the, not killing, but the, the damaging lots of other trees. But it's been 20 years at least under the black knot and tree under Mayday. And it's still, trees are doing fine. Eventually, you, I've, this year I start seeing that some of the big branches start dying off. But it takes 20 years. Lots of people kind of freak out with the black knot. I yes, you have to remove it. Yes, you 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 know it can spread, but it still is not gonna kill trees like uh, fire blight. Fire blight is, can kill you in in a day, <laughs> in many ways. In a week, whole tree is gone. This one is not. It takes a years to do to kill the trees. Um, rubbing of the branches. It's very common what you have here when you have a wounds and everything else. Try to avoid that. Don't try to keep them. Um, and this is again wonderful uh, uh, crab apple, never been pruned and it's been totally neglected. Uh, this one with the suckers, uh, breaking off the branch is very common. Uh, this is a topping of the uh, flowering crab apple. Again, same thing with the pruning. You have to understand with pruning with the, uh, uh, of the of the fruit tree, there is the bud that is uh, producing the fruit, and there is a leaf bud. Look at the difference. This is a leaf, but this is what like a little stub, and that's where the flower, that's where the fruit is coming. So when I prune the apples, I always look how many of these do I have and how many of this do I have. And that's that's what I said. It became like an art. You have to really know what you're doing. Uh, apples, again, you always try to keep the center of the fruit tree open, like a vase. This is open. This is not open. Look at this. When wind can go through. And the same example is basically here. Um, again, there is each of the fruit tree requires special attention, tricks, and little things that that you have to uh, you have to know when you prune them. And uh, but again, general rule of thumb: any crossing, any rubbing, any uh, weak crotches you remove, and you always try to keep the center open because of the wind, and try to avoid the fire blight and other disease that can go. Uh, after the some of the some of the fruit trees, uh, shrubs, uh, the the shrubs that are blooming before June twentieth, uh, they start early in the spring and they finish by June twentieth. Dogwood, lilac, spirea, smoke orange, 
uh you prune uh uh and again uh you prune them immediately after the uh after the bloom has finished so you wait 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 uh once they are finished and after june 20 you can prune them and remove the dead uh, uh dead flowers uh june blooming after june uh, after june 20 i have uh, some of the uh, uh sink oil or potatillas right now right now they're still blooming they're yellowish or, or whitish color uh, and you can uh, only prune them during the dormant season, so March, April, May, depending. So again, if you look in your neighborhood and you see the uh, potentilla or, or sink oil, and they have a now yellow or white flowers, they're still blooming. It's mind-boggling to me. Uh, so, but again, if you see them uh, that they're blooming after the June 20th, you can prune them uh, later in the winter or early in the spring. Now, lilac and cotton aster. Lots of people ask me about that. I always said with lilac, there's a hard way. You have a scent like this. You can remove individual small big branches and let the young come back, which is quite honestly pain in the butt. Uh, or you can cut above the six inches and let the new growth um, to go. The only reason why I would like to sometimes do uh, this pruning and take a big branches, I still want a privacy, still want a flowers. By doing this method, taking the big and old one, you still have lots of young that is going to flower and have a privacy. If your lilac is really too old and doesn't produce anything, cutting all the way to the six inches is the only way. Same thing with cotton aster. If they're infested and uh, by the by the uh, oh my goodness by the oyster shell scale, uh, you the only way sometimes you have so many dead holes, so many dead trees, you cut all the way to the ground, and the new new growth is going to come back. Roses, it's also art. You have to know lots of things about that. Um, and again, lots of people made mistake on the pruning, and then there's a lot of rots are coming inside of the of those uh, uh, small little stems, which is very common. Uh, anything uh, smaller than size of the pencil should be removed. Try to keep four or five big, thick uh, branches and uh, and let them to grow year after year. Uh, you can prune them. Again, this is what lots of people do. They do severe pruning and try to, you know, remove as much as possible. Again, roses, generally speaking, very forgiving come to the pruning. Um, but again, they have a lot of diseases, lots of issues with, with the insects. And again, you have to know how to prune to avoid that as much as you can. Shelter belts and fire hazards, which I'm going to talk about next, probably, topic uh, next week. Um, there is more and more shelter belts go to the smoke, and mostly because of the of the lots of dead branches inside of the shelter belts, and it's like a messy. And usually in April, March, April, May, when you have a, a high winds and temperature pretty high, uh, people do the work on the farm, or preparing or doing the work, and the spark is so easy. Um, this is what happened again. The, the gentleman tried to do the uh some of the pine work spark came in and went this is a coragana which is very highly flammable um very easy to go in the smoke um and uh and started the fire so you gotta be conscious about that but we will cover that topic next next week uh root pruning it's a little bit hard my message is if you ever seen i think i covered this if you have a seen something like this root circling in the pot, don't touch them, don't plant them, don't do anything. Just buy a new one if it doesn't have this. If you if you when you have a don't hit when you don't have a root circling, you know, you, I, I think I covered in the tree planting. You wash the all of the soil, you look the uh, look the roots, and if you see any crossing, anything like that, you you do the pruning. But again, that requires a little bit of knowledge how the roots root works. Um, root girdling is a result of not pruning the pruning the trees. It's kind of crazy that you see the roots literally killing the killing themselves uh, above ground the tree, and you can see this is one of the causes. Basically, stop water and nutrients moving up, and and rot came in and 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 uh, killed the tree. Tools. This is my old tools. I have a, a chainsaw. Uh, I have a. a a uh, small little chainsaw that is uh, is I use. It's very small. I can use it. Doesn't doesn't doesn't. I don't need a big chainsaw uh, whatsoever. It's a steel one. I think LT seventy one seventy. 
this is all my tools. I have also one, actually one more bigger uh, pole. Um, uh, this one is a, a whisker, and this one was bought in Lee Valley. Uh, the other one is uh, Japanese tools and everything else. Doesn't matter what tools you have. You have to keep them sharp, and you have to keep them clean. I like felt cool, uh, my pruners, because when I do lots of pruning, they are very good. They don't create me a problem, but there's nothing wrong with this one, which is Felco is, let's say this one is 80 bucks. I can buy this one for 20 bucks. I like Felco because if I do everyday pruning, I, I need a really good pruning, uh, uh, pruning that is going to good on my wrist. But if you do just a few times a year, buying $20 uh, worth of tools, is nothing wrong with that. Make sure you have a goggles, make sure you have a helmet, make sure you have a good gloves, and you have a good uh, 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 saw. That's all what you might need. And again, the biggest thing is just keep them, keep them clean and sharp. Sharpen the, the one of the things I I have a one client that has probably twenty of those at Felco. And Felco is again it's top notch Swiss pruning tool, and it's hundred seventy to hundred fifty dollars. And he has a, like. 15 of these and i said wow and he's not art or anything like that and he said tosha they are dull I said okay let me see when i see the felco i said it's pretty good too it's like a mercedes-benz in, in the car manufacturing and uh and I, all of them are dull and i do from as a part of the service to all of my clients i do the sharpening and i show them how to do the sharpening once you sharpen this and clean i do the cleaning i do the sharpening and every single of them is so good. Doesn't matter what, 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 what brand you got it, but it's sharpening and cleaning is the, probably the biggest thing. And I, after I finish my daily work, I always prune uh, my trees. I always uh, clean my trees. Doesn't matter how tired I am, I always clean them after I finish work and sharpen them. I sometimes I put 10 hours, 12 hours a day to work, and it could be hard, and it is hard, but come home, I take, I take, take a beer after the work and take the uh, sanitizer and clean my tools and sharpen my tools for the next day. So that's the best thing you can do. Buy, buy really only what you need. Don't buy. I've, I've seen people have a 15 pounds. Why? You need a one, maybe two. That's it. And you need a one or two low, one loper. You need a one, one saw that you need and that's it. You don't need to buy a bunch of things. People always, what, why people buy more? Because they don't want to sharpen. They don't want to clean them up. And they'll forget them and leave them rusty or something like that. And, oh, it's a dull and I, I cannot, this is not good tool. I buy the new one. No, just you don't need to do that. Go back to the messages. Duty care is something that you are really legally, by law, accountable if you have a tree on your property. If you do nothing and things go wrong, you are negligent. Most of the trees does not need the pruning whatsoever. Absolutely don't need any pruning. Safety is a must. Don't play with that. Don't. It's tr pruning the trees, and especially big trees and even small trees. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be deadly and really can damage a lot. Remember the proper pruning techniques, one, two, three. Take undercut one. Take the weight of the of the branch number two and final cut not to damage the root uh, branch color. Remember 3D. Uh, always hire arborist. Always hire somebody who has a WCB insurance. If they don't, do not touch it. You must hire arborist or utility company when you deal with the power lines. Don't play with that. Tools keep sharp and clean. That doesn't matter what you buy. Buy few. Buy what you really need but keep them sharp and clean. Only it's a hard work, lots of fun. And there's lots of information. I hope this webinar will give you uh, some hints of the, what is the pruning all about. Thank you very much. And Quinton, it's yours. All right. Again, a lot of information. So please go back and review this whole YouTube and, and definitely absorb as much as you can. Uh, I've got a few sh slides here I will share. Yeah, go. Cool. All right. 
So again, you know, we're talking trees with Toso. Second last one. One more to go. Last one is next Tuesday at one o'clock. So come check it out. We'll be talking fire smart and firewood. There's that promo code. One last time. That's a pretty cool promo code. Hey, Toso. It is. <laughs> I like it. When I saw the first time when I was talking, I said, oh, that's a pretty good promo code. Absolutely. Um, people, I hope people is going to look at and use it. Absolutely use it. It's a good thing the county provide the trees uh, to your residents. And it's a, it's a very good, uh, good program. And uh, absolutely use it. 50% can save you a little bit money. Yeah. And, you, and, and check those videos. We, we cover all of the tree planting and topics and everything else. And and I said to the resident of Statler, you have a great person in Quinton and his staff who knows a lot about trees and, and support, and you can always call him. Um, it's a good, good, good resource that you guys have there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so with that, thank you very much, Toso, for the information. And please join us next week for our last go. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Quinton, and uh, looking forward for the next week again. I'm going to miss you guys on the on the Torsho, uh, Trees with Torsho on Tuesdays. I will we'll we'll make we'll something. On my Tuesdays. We'll have to do something. Well, we'll do. <laughs> hey, Quinton, right. thank you so much, guys. Stay safe and see you next time. See you next time. Okay, bye.